Hello everybody and uh, welcome back to Belding Hill Farms channel. Um, so today, um, this this happened uh, earlier this summer, um, but uh, I've been slow getting the video editing done. But uh, we're here today at a, a friend of ours' house um, who has found some bees uh, going into her house. So I did a little bit of investigation and you'll see in this photo here that the bees were making their way underneath that flashing. So. I wasn't sure whether they were going into the wall um, or into this little roof. Um, so a week ago, I had come down and actually taken off just one board enough I could get my camera in and take a picture and discover that they were in here. Um, so you know, today we're, we're making a plan to uh, remove these bees. The customer really did not want to, to destroy these bees. Um, you know, spraying them with the poison wasn't an option. She was more than willing to uh, tear apart the roof and even though she'd have to rebuild it and stuff just to save the bees. So we're happy because these uh, bees, once we're done, will come back to our homestead and hopefully uh, be uh, productive uh, members of our farm team for years to come. So here uh, you'll see that I'm starting to use the uh, bee vacuum that we built. And, and there is a previous video for that about the build. It was a very simple um, build and this is giving you uh, a good view here of the size of this uh, swarm that had found its way in uh, to her roof I actually thought um, because it does actually so we do beyond. i do not claim to be a bee expert um, we had bees three years ago on our farm and uh, they actually died off uh, in that winter um, and then we went a few years without them and then this spring we've uh, gotten uh, more bees um, so we, we got this hive and we bought three hives and we also um, had one of our swarm traps um, capture a hive. Um, so uh, I'm not going to narrate the entire thing here. Uh, I think some of it you just may want to enjoy the, uh, the view of what's happening. But you can see this was a, a rather large uh, colony. And based on the color of the comb... Um, and uh, the fact the customer had not seen these bees um, a lot. Uh, we believe this colony probably found its way in here this spring and just uh, over the course of a couple months, a few months in, this, in the early part of summer, built all of this uh, in preparation for winter. Um, so, uh, yeah, so we're helping them uh, to find a new home. Uh, and you'll, <clears throat> you'll see that we do uh, try to recover some of this uh, comb um, for the bees uh, later. So again, you'll see us using our, our bee vacuum here. And um, we, we made that bee vacuum for probably $30. It was very cheap. Um, yeah, I used whatever parts I could find. Um, and you'll notice that yep. it's not okay. like, you'll notice that we're making multiple passes before we get many bees. 
Uh, and that's because basically we have the suction turned down very, very low in the vacuum because we do not want to damage the bees as we're, as we're sucking them um, through the pipe. Uh, and this hose that we're using is actually, it's an old uh, hose out of the um, central vac system out of someone's house. They gave it to me. Uh, it made sense for this job because it's quite long and we're up on uh, two lifts of scaffolding here. And the bees have quite a trip to get through um, when we actually do suck them up down to the bucket. Um, but uh, during this uh, this entire collection, we the bees survived that vacuum very, very well. I mean, we did have I'm some really worried losses, that, of, uh, of course you're going to. Um, but I'm really worried that they were say had, that this is the overflow and they've got five percent in the wall maybe, or something. You know, maybe six, seven tops. You know what I mean? Like um, the vast majority of the bees made it uh, safely to the bucket and then from the bucket safely uh, into our our new hive. Um, so we're very proud of that as well. Um, and you'll see here that uh, we've gotten a good portion of the bees vacuumed up at this point. Um, and a good chunk of the comb. It's kind of neat in this uh, in this uh, swarm that they actually oh, uh, not nice. a swarm, I guess, but I got honey this colony that they actually ran some of their comb straight uh, in between the rafters of this little roof, uh, and then they turned some almost 90 degrees and ran them the other way. Um, it's really kind of neat how they how they decide to do that. Now in this picture here, you'll see some of this the uh, cells have like little bees poking out of them. Those are bees that are just emerging Good from enough. those cells. So they're actually, between them and some of the other friends, they're eating the wax cap off their um, covering and they're actually coming out of um, the cells. So here we're getting ready to take some bees uh, that uh, we've, so this is our the, the final destination for the bees when they get sucked out. Um, Gary is lifting the lid, pulling it back a little bit, and I'm gonna dump the bees in. If you watch carefully, you can see a big mass of bees dump in there. Um, and essentially what we found is that, uh, you know, they weren't they weren't uh, flying when we dumped them in, so they were a little, they were, it was almost like they were stunned, but within a very short period of time, they did come back around and, and started flying around. You can see the bees that are around Gary and I there. Um, right now, so there is lots of activity still in the in the hive. So the next thing we're getting set to do here is, uh, and you'll see we just pulled out an empty frame. Um, and my hives, again, we got a bunch of videos on our channel here about the hives that we use, um, but we're using a horizontal hive, uh, and we're using Layen's frames. So that is not normal. Uh, in air quotes, uh, from what most people keeping bees are using. We're certainly not saying it's right or wrong. This is just an experimentation path we're going down to try something different. Um, so this is one of our lay-ins frames, and it's, it's very large. Um, it's not quite as wide as a, a traditional Langstroth, but it is uh, quite a bit longer than a traditional Langstroth. Um, so what we're doing with the elastic bands here we're putting them all in place and then we're going to take some of that comb that we took out especially anything that has some some brood or baby bees uh, or future bees in it we're going to take and cut those out and make them fit into that that uh, frame so um, fortunately my camera work was a little shoddy here um, because you can't see that frame or that uh, sorry that uh, comb but what I'm doing I'm just squaring off some edges here and I'm trying to make this um, kind of fit to the frame and you'll see that uh, that comb right there any of the ones that have caps on them that basically means that they're baby bees in there so the queen has laid um, the eggs in there and uh, we're trying to give that back to the bees so they can continue raising them and then that'll help the colony kind of prosper when we get it back to our homestead um, so uh, again, we don't know if we have the queen. Uh, and as it turns out, I, I know because uh, I'm, I'm recording this uh, significantly into the future. In the end, we did not have the queen. Um, not sure what happened to her, um, but we did not get her. So the hive actually had to um, requeen themselves. Um, so they actually took some of these cells that uh, are capped over now and uh, they converted those to queen cells and they they actually raised up their own queen 
the downside to that is it we did lose a lot of progress, a lot of time with this hive that we could have had had we gotten the queen. Um, unfortunately, that's just it. Just wasn't in the cards. It didn't uh, didn't work out. Um, but uh, as of uh, right now, which is mid uh, October, the hive is still going. It's um, it's 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 a little bit stunted because of the loss of the queen here, but I'm still optimistic that it uh, will make it through into the winter. Um, also, looking back on this now because I'm doing the editing later, I, although it was fine to try to use some more of that space by filling those frames up. Um, in actual fact, it really made a bit of a mess for ourselves. We would have served ourselves better to really square that off and drop it into the um, frame so it set very well in the frame. It would have given the bees another chance. But what actually happened in our hive when we put these in is that they kind of fell apart in the center um, and kind of folded out. And then the bees ended up joining two or three frames together. So we, we kind of created our own problem. And, and again, as I said earlier in this video, I do not claim to be an expert. This is, a, this is we, we do many things in a homestead, and this is just another thing that we're doing, and it's a skill that we're trying to learn. And one thing about our channel, we, we do try very hard to put on our successes and our failures. Um, so we still consider this a success. We just made some mistakes, and we'll learn from them in the future. And, and it really came down to the fact that we were trying to save every that baby bee that, that uh, was in those uh, combs. But anyways, we'll, we'll learn from the future. So I'll just let you uh, enjoy some of this, um, more of our framing up of the, uh, of the comb. And, uh, and I'll come back on in a little bit. So, kind of hate to, what do you think? Maybe something like that? Yeah. I think put this one down further. Yeah. Like, he's bigger, so he's. So, I'm thinking maybe Gary. Either that or rest it on the bottom, put some other pieces up there. What's that? I said rest That's what I'm thinking, rest it on the bottom. Yeah. 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 No, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. So, right about there, I think we'll lose a few larvae, but I think we can afford it. This time I'm not going to cut the elastic bands like I did the last time. I think rather than do anything more, we'll just crawl that good. I mean, if we save that much brood comb, I think that's pretty good, eh? Or do you think you want to try to put another piece up on top? Okay. Funny, huh? Cut that little corner off here. Leave a little bit of the corner. Like, no, come down and just take a little time. Yeah, right there. Perfect, because then that other part will go. Yeah, that other part will sit right on there when we hold it up. I'll just try it and we'll see. Where can I put it? Again, I, I realize here that uh, Gary and I, I think we're being a little greedy trying to get uh, as much of this brood um, comb into the new hive. Um, 
and, but this for this particular frame did work out better because we have such a large portion of it um, captured between the elastic bands in the bottom um, and, and even this small piece we're putting up top it uh, this one worked out significantly better um, than some of the other frames um, just as far as staying together and the bees just seamlessly joined those two pieces together attached the comb to the sides uh, and still kept it within the frame um, but uh, like I said earlier, if I was to do it again, um, I would put smaller chunks in. Like really, we could have left just the bottom part uh, of this uh, comb in this frame, and that would have been perfect. We didn't need to put that little piece up top. But again, we're just trying to be greedy and get as many of those uh, bees or baby bees um, you know, through um, as possible. And part of it was that um, we didn't know if we had the queen, so it was important to get as many of those Yeah, maybe one possible. good one and a couple yeah. small ones probably. Three more frames. Three more frames. They just set it down until I get a rough idea. So which we cut off, this side or the other? Bob would probably eaten them larvae, would he? Mm -hmm. How did he ever make out with his, uh, what was he trying to do? Make the, or extract the royal jelly or something? Did oh, he... he did that one year, yeah. To help his rheumatism. I don't know how to help his <laughs> rheumatism. But I couldn't imagine the work he went through to do that. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah, to raise all these queens, right? Basically what we did in the spring, yeah. raising queens. Yeah. Except he just went to the stage that they put the royal jelly in. Right. Okay. He's keen to try. Oh yeah, that's, that's one thing that's fun about all this stuff, right? It's yeah. kind of the experiment yeah, but, side. Yeah, but even after he'd been doing it for 40 years, he's still... He's still trying stuff. stuff. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like he was quite interested in this. He says the jury's going to be out on it. We used to love it. We have a jury. Oh, on the on my hive style? On your you hive. Mean? Exactly. I have an open mind, so we'll see. We'll watch this closely. Yeah. yeah. I have no idea anymore of which which way the cells were. Can you tell? Yeah, I know. I, I just can't quite see it. What's that? If it's not right, they'll change it. It's true. I couldn't believe the way they did that. Probably look one close. famous for for biting off more than I can chew and underestimating the chewing. It's a good one to do. It's a drone up there. Yeah, I them too. So that smell that I'm smelling now, is that the, uh, is that like a pheromone in them? Or is that the golden one? So the smell that I'm talking about here, I can't even describe it. It was kind of a, a very strong smell though, and I'm assuming it was related to us sucking these bees up. It was some sort of pheromone they were giving off or something. Yeah. If any of you other beekeepers out there know what the answer to that is, what that very pungent smell I was smelling was, please let us know. 
All right, so here's her roof cavity uh, cleaned all out. Uh, we got uh, all that comb out of there. There is still some bees there. Um, but uh, And here we are. This is the hive back at our homestead. Um, so we just left it on the ground here um, short term while I built a hive stand uh, similar to the one you see to the left there. Um, and right here, what you're seeing, you're seeing some bees being pushed out. And some of them are stunned bees. And I think some are probably like dead bees that, that they're that they're getting out of the hive. Smell but a lot of those like bees that get pushed out the door here because they stood and watched for a while, uh, actually just came outside and then kind of got reoriented. And then, and then they actually started moving again. Um, some were dead, for sure. But grand scheme of things, when I looked, I still say we were probably 5%. Once again, I want to thank everyone for watching and uh, Joe and I really appreciate all of our subscribers and the people who follow our journey along uh, and uh, we look forward to providing more videos to you in the future. Thank you.